at the end. We are right on time. So I'm sorry if you have a lot of questions before you had so, so many questions and I couldn't answer all of them. And I'm really happy about it, but I'm also really sad that I don't have enough time to do so. So I'm going to try to do a better job this time of leaving you a little more time for the questions. So just before, a little addendum, because I did screw up in a previous presentation. You remember I tried to rename uh, the file and it didn't work. Well, it turns out uh, I had two files named Baz, so my software works great. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So now, what I'm going to do during this presentation is that I'm going to... Oops, I didn't stop my timer. Just give me a little second. And let's subtract one minute. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do right now, it's a little different from the previous talk I have gave you and different even from what Noura gave you. There's like a scaling the mountain as far as difficulty is concerned. And on this one, I will be telling you about the technical aspects of Orgram because, you know, I've been telling you about the general philosophy of the notes and the general philosophy of organization. But right now, I really want to get into the nitty gritty about Orgram. So if we go in the Git repository, this at the very core is all grow. And for some of you who have no experience whatsoever uh, developing stuff, uh, programming, or anything along those lines, this is how all the development around the world is working. You have a repository, a Git repository, where you have all the files, all the libraries you're using, all the programs, all the commands, everything is inside your files. And in a way, this is the Orgrim project. You can see that we have many files. We have Orgrim buffer, capture, compat, completion, dailies, et cetera, et cetera. So before we dive a little deeper, I just want to give you a lay of the land, so to speak, so no, to know where we're heading. So Orgrim is built on top of org mode. And org mode gives us plenty of tools to play around with the files. I'm moving the glass. I'm, I'm starting to move my hands a little bit. You know, when I get excited about something, I move my hand, and then bad stuff happens. So in org Rome, we have org mode. And org mode gives us plenty of tools, which are incredibly useful for writing stuff. So you know, we already have the links. We already have the hierarchy, which is given by having trees within trees within trees. We have uh, code blocks. We have Babel blocks. We have so much stuff. We have an arsenal of tools that have been developed for the last 15 years. And when you think about it, all Chrome just wants to create backlinks. But it sounds something very simple. But the problem is that we need to play nicely with all of those intricate pieces. Uh, the fact is, it takes quite a lot of expertise to be able to do so, because if right now we are in the brain of org Rome, but if I show you the brain of org mode, so this is the brain of org mode. And it looks very simple like this, because I haven't entered the Lisp folder. But I'm just going to enter it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Don't worry if you don't see everything. But I just want you to get a fear, a sh the sheer feel of magnitude that is um, org mode. So right now, we are in a very small size. What I'm going to do, I'm going to skip one page. OK, one, two, three. We have, let's just check how many lines we have. OK, let me just revert to a fairly readable side. At the bottom, you can see that we have, oh, it's not showing because it's a little small. OK, I'm just going to resize the window a little bit. It's not showing up. Give me a second. Oh, I can't see how many lines I have. OK, so let's do it the getaway. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the buffer, and we're going to count how many lines we have. So at the bottom, in a MIDI buffer, and the MIDI buffer is this area, we have 377 lines, which means 377 libraries within org mode. And mind you, that's not counting all the modules that we have on the side which come on top of org mode. Now, when you try to think about something so elemental as links, you have to think about how to play well with every single one of these modules. Now, obviously, not the 370. Sometimes you know, one 
module is not going to do anything. Like I'm not sure opcalc we're doing anything with it. But it's something that we have to keep in mind. And so really early on when we started developing all Grown with Jethro Kwan, my uh, co-maintainer, you know, we had this idea that we wanted to develop something that was optimized, something that would, you know, scale very nicely, whether or not you had, you know, something that would work as fast if you had 10 files, or if you had 100 files, or if you had 10,000 files and maybe more. So the problem when you do this, and I'm doing some callbacks to the talk I gave you earlier today about few small, few big files versus many, I got confused, few big files versus many small files. The problem with this is that we need to think about optimization from the get-go. And so one of the decisions we took when we got started with uh, Orgrom is that if I go in my uh, test repository, so that's the one in which we were right before, we have a file which is called Orgrom DB. Now, if I open it, it's not it's a little garbage because uh, it's a binary. But what we have is a database with which we communicate via, uh, sorry, it's an SQL database. And what this allows us to do is we store all the information we need inside this SQL database, which allows us to speed up a lot of the operations that are necessary for the functioning of our Grom. So for instance, if I go back to the index file that I had before, let's just go back to foo actually, this way you'll see a little more on the side. So you see that on the side we have, whoops, two links. I'm not going to click on them, otherwise I'm going to open them, but we have two links. Now, there are many implementations of the Zettel custom method inside Emacs and, inside, and with org mode. But what we've decided to do is that every time you have a link, so if we go to the index again, here at point, we have the link foo. Every time we create a link, we update our database to say, OK, so we have a link in the file index, which is leading to the file foo.org, and it is situated under the heading, a heading. And if you check the side buffer, you see that all this, all this information which I just highlighted to you are, are present right here. So, yeah? Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot this. Thank you. OK, so let's see. Log. Now muted. OK, I'm going to split. Uh, actually, I'm going to split like this. Uh, and I'm going to go back there. The problem is that I can't show my keystrokes at the same time as I'm showing, I'm showing uh, the side buffer. So I'll keep it right now for, for your own discretion. Anyway, getting back to the talk. So the thing is, we have this SQL database, and the goal is to keep it optimized. Now, why is it better optimized than just using org Roam? Sorry, just using default org mode. So in my talk about many big files versus a few I keep getting, you know, you got what I was saying. I'm not going to repeat it. By the way, it is uh, 10 to 10. And I'm starting really to, to be tired now. So uh, moving on to, um, uh, what did I want to show you? So it was all, yes, all elements. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, see, uh, I believe it's all elements pass buffer. So I was telling you about uh, all elements before. And the main command, sorry, the main function that is used by org element is pass buffer. What it does, and you can see the doc string, is that it recursively pass the buffer and returns structure. Structure being all the information that we have in this buffer. So just to show you a little more, we're going to move into a scratch buffer. And what we're going to do is that we're going to write this command, pass buffer, and we're going to check the output of this command. Oh, sorry, not this one. We're going to go in the index. So the index file, you have a title, you have a heading, you have a link, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to evaluate this sexp. And now at the bottom in the mini buffer, in the mini buffer, sorry, you see an AST, an abstract. Have you said, I don't remember what the S stands for. Semantic? Huh, interesting. Anyway, a representation of the data in a way that is exploitable by a machine. Now, what I'm going to do, Syntax, thank you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste it inside the buffer 
in a way that is humanly readable. And you can see that we have plenty of information. We have a section which starts at the char uh, one, which ends at the uh, uh, character 45. We have the content, so Emacs scratch. Oh, actually, no, never mind. I did something wrong. I run it in the wrong buffer. So actually, what are we going to do? We're going to run this command with the selected window next window. OK, that's a bit of live uh, illisp writing for you right now. OK, so now if I evaluate this and paste the content of the buffer, it is doing its bidding. So now, what we have? We have a section. We have the keyword title, which you see right here. You have the value. If we scroll down a little bit, we have a heading, which is right here. We have the content, which should be, yes, the content is not listed exactly here, but you have a paragraph, which is this. And then you have a link, et cetera, et cetera. It is all uh, a parenthesis. If you're not used to Elisp, like right now, I've selected only the content of the parenthesis link. I can move like this, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, it's not an Elisp les lesson that I'm doing right now. But basically, if we were to use the default tooling of org, room, org mode, sorry, I keep getting the two confused. Sorry for that. Uh, it would be extremely slow to do what we're doing. Some people are doing so. Some implementations of uh, the ZLCAS method inside Emacs have opted for this method. But the problem is that we think that it scales poorly. Now, some of the people have decided to not do with a database. And what they do is that they use a tool which is called rip grep. You might know grep, which is a tool that allows you to search uh, a file, the content of a file for a line. So for instance, if we open vterm here, uh, let's see. So I've opened vterm. I am in this repository. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, load the content of the file. Uh, how am I going to do this? Oh, um, I need to move to bash. Let's do grep uh, for the line. Which links did we did we have? Grep foo inside the file. Is it three? I can't remember. Okay, let's do this. Am I working? No. Let's go for foo. Uh, is it eight? Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to copy the name. Up. There we go. No. Ah. Problem with live presentation, always. You know what? I'm struggling, so I'm going to drop this point. Anyway, so grep is a simple tool that allows you to search the content of a file. But rib grep is a solution that is written in Rust and which is supposed to be, well, not supposed, which is far more capable. Now, I'd like to talk to you about the future of Orgrom. Right now, I've told you about the general concept, which is about using uh, a SQL database and about playing nicely with org mode. But we think that there's something great that we can do about Orgrom. Now, I've been talking with the um, a lot of people who are behind org mode. And you know, they've told us, do you think that Orgrom could have something to bring to org mode? Let's say backlinks. Is there something that we could be doing to import backlinks into org mode? And we thought about it with Jethro. And the problem is, uh, We've always tried to have an experimental ground, a very, uh, con a very isolated portion of your system where we could track backlinks. And that's why we use um, a slipbox directory so that we only track backlinks in one specific place. But now, because there seems to be so much interest about the method and we have so much backing on, uh, you know, on GitHub, we have like 2,600 2, stars, which is mind boggling to us because we have so much success. But we have plenty of ideas about the future. One of the key paths of development being the writing of an external parser for Orgram. So I've been telling you about org element. Org elements runs inside Emacs. But what if we wrote a, a background process that could read a file, an augment file, extract the same type of data that you see on your screen right now so that we could use to update our database so that we could use to uh, compute the links so that we could use it to show you know all Grom server all the connections between your nodes now there is a path of improvement here that is extremely important to us but you know that's the technical aspect and i'm out of time i'm just going to take one more minute to finish on this point but 
we believe that Orgrim has the potential to be a think tank in a way for org mode and the way we think about uh, note taking in general. I've stressed a great deal in my first presentation, sorry, the one I did before Nura, that Orgrom is really great as a way to think organically about knowledge. And honestly, we kind of want to put the theory into practice with Orgrom. We are holding something which has the potential to be a great factor of innovation for the future, whether it be for org mode or even for software in general, uh, you know, the way to think about uh, build um, nodes of knowledge in a way, and the way to represent all those ideas with the graph, the way to basically have a note-taking system that corresponds to the research, that corresponds to the way you think. So, yeah, I believe we are really excited about this. And if you want to keep track of the development of Orgrom, um, I on my YouTube channel, which is already linked a little earlier inside this present, uh, inside the pad, sorry, um, I do have a YouTube channel where I try to present uh, novelties or the new stuff inside um, Orgrom, but I'll also be recording videos about the technical aspects, about the direction that we're taking with Orgrom. And if you want to talk with us, we are always available either on ISC channel Orgrom. Uh, I believe there's a dash between org and Rome, but also on the discourse, and I'll be putting all the links inside the conversation. And that's me done. So thank you for listening. And now I'll be taking three minutes of questions so as to be right on time. Many thanks for your awesome talk, Leo. Thank you. So I'm just refreshing the page, and I'm going to scroll down to my talk, if I can find the right section. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just scroll a little bit. Uh, reproducible Emacs. Uh, no, I think it's slower. God, we have so many questions. I'm so, uh, at the same time, I'm pissed because I can't find it, but I'm really, really impressed by the number of questions that we had. Oh, yeah. Um, yours is about, I think, about line 600 or so. Yes, got it. Splendid. So, um, the questions. So, why not run a background Emacs for passing instead of implementing a new parser? So, I believe we've had this question. Uh, I was giving a similar talk uh, earlier this week, and uh, th this week, I'm not French, this week, sorry. And uh, someone asked me this question. And the thing is, running a background Emacs process, you know, it sounds great, but it's also very limited because all the problems we have about concurrency, about threads in Emacs, well, yes, we can forward all our calls to a background Emacs, just like, uh, you know, when you export a file with, uh, um, sorry, uh, I mean, could you mute the microphone when you're speaking? It's a little hard for me to concentrate. That's fine, don't worry. You are now muted. Uh, so, uh, damn it, where was I? Let me read the question. Yes. So basically, forwarding all the questions, uh, sorry, all the queries to uh, background Emacs, that is what uh, org export is doing. Like, you have the ability to asynchronously exports LaTeX documents, ODT documents from org mode, and it uses a very minimal version of Emacs to do that. But the problem is that we think that it's not going to scale as well as a true, genuine background process. And since we have been talking a lot, as far as the org mode development is concerned, about uh, writing a proper parser, writing a proper documentation for the passing of org mode file, and writing a proper document standard that says, okay, this is how the org mode format works, you know, to basically have a way to not fall into the traps of Markdown, which has many, many standards. We need to think about this, and we believe that Orgrom has the ability to think about these questions, and as a, as a person, I'm also really interested about this. So I, I can take the questions, I mean, so don't worry about feeding them to me. So how often does the uh, DB index get updated in order to contain changes within the org files? So we have two ways. Either we update as soon as you save a file, or we have a timer, which is an idle timer, which waits, OK, the user has not imputed, imputed anything in the last five seconds, so it's time to queue a database passing, uh, a rebuild of the data, not a, a, an incrementation of the data database, I should say. So did you ever think of, uh, I believe I have one more, one more minute and then I'll hand it to the other folks. Do you ever think of opening up or designing the SQL DB as a general org speed up tool outside of Orgrom so that other libraries that do execute complex queries are able to use it? Well, 
uh, a lot of people have been working on this, and I believe Alpha Papa has been thinking quite a lot about this. You know, all QL is a qu the QL stands for query language, language, and I, I, I can't remember now what's uh, what the backend is for all QL, but the idea is relatively relatively the same. You know, it's about finding ways to optimize the way we um, store the data about an org mode file and how we retrieve it, and SQL for us seems to seem to be a good idea. Now, obviously, maybe we could do something about org mode, but the problem is having a background process is not necessarily um, in the core mentality of org mode, but it's definitely a, something that we could suggest uh, when we are a little more mature because, well, org Rome was started last February, and so it's a fairly young project in a way. So uh, I see plenty more questions, but uh, I'm out of time, folks. So I'm not sure uh, the other speaker is probably ready. So what I'll do is that I'll probably try to answer your questions when I get the time inside the pad. But feel free to ping me on ISC or on the, the different channels we have for Ogro, and I'll answer them with you know as much energy as I can gather. All right, thank you so much. You are now unmuted. Thank you again very much, Leo. And that was me done for today, so you'll see me at the end, but I'm officially done, and I am free of thoughts. I can focus on sleeping, probably. <laughs> awesome. Talk to you All right, bit. see you guys later. Bye-bye. Yep, bye. -bye. Yeah, bye.